All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. We finally have an assortment of varieties here in front of me to taste and compare. Um, I have been ripening here in the Philadelphia area. Today is, by the way, August 1st, but for the last three weeks, I've been ripening main crop due to uh, the power of a greenhouse. Growing fig trees in containers and then bringing them in that greenhouse to give them a head start, whether it was my own greenhouse or the commercial greenhouse, we've had a, a really nice start to the season here and i have probably roughly almost 20 maybe more varieties ripening right now at the beginning of august which is nice um, now i've done tastings like this before where we've compared a lot of varieties at once um, i'm going to try to make this as quick as possible giving you guys some short um, little taste notes of each one we'll cut them open um, if you want more detailed information about the individual varieties that we're going to be comparing today and you want to look at the actual trees um, of the different fig varieties that we're looking at today, then I would recommend going to my blog, figboss.com, because we're going to have the individual variety reviews. If we haven't already done them, I'm going to be releasing them on my blog only. Well, they're going to be published on YouTube, but you have to go to my blog to find the link to actually watch the video. I'm trying to get more traffic there. It's better for SEO. I'm trying to create a variety directory of information there as well. Um, one other note, uh, one other announcement, I should say. I'm going to start cutting these open now for you guys. Um, we have uh, a lesson that I'm going to be giving at the Fairmount Food Forest. It's a presentation on growing figs. And so if you're in this area, in the Philadelphia area, it's at Fair, it's pretty much in Fairmount Park. Um, Fairmount Food Forest. The details are also found on my blog, figboss.com. It's free. You just show up. You don't have to register. You don't have to do anything. Um, that's going to be, I believe, August 5th, so I think it's this weekend. Um, let's see here, let me look at my calendar. Actually, today is the July 31st. That's why I was a little confused there. Yeah, so it's August 5th and it's from 1 to 3 p.m. I'll be giving a full presentation on figs, how to grow them, especially in this area. The um, One of the managers there of the food forest, Michael, is really into figs and that's why that's how he kind of he reached out to me to get me to talk about figs to tell him and kind of teach him how to grow figs in this area and of course he figured well why not let's make this not just you know information for myself let's make this information available to local people um, so there's going to be local philadelphia people there that uh, have never seen any of my videos who have no idea who i am and then there's going to be, hopefully, I've already spoken to a number of people who have let me know that they're coming. So hopefully we have a decent number of you guys there. I get to meet you. I probably won't meet you guys at any other event this year. So it's, this is the only real opportunity that if you did want to meet me at one of these events, normally I go to either Bass's Fig Gathering or more recent years have been going to the Staten Island Fig Festival. I'm not going to be at the Staten Island Fig Festival this year. Um, just giving you a heads up. So if you wanted to meet me, you haven't already. And we normally do that every year for those who have, are new to the channel. Um, that's the opportunity. And so I'll give you guys a presentation on the figs. We'll talk about them. I will probably videotape it record it just like we're doing now and then publish it on YouTube and on the blog. That way you guys can get the talk for those of us that live further away. But um, I'm going to, at the end, do a Q&A and then we'll do a meet. So if anyone's interested in meeting me, obviously we can talk afterwards. And I will probably be bringing figs like these. And you guys will get to, of course, um, taste them. I'll, I will bring them really for comparison to let people know that there are obviously amazing fig varieties and there's a diversity of, of different varieties available that a lot of people have just no idea about. So um, I'm going to obviously 
bring them to show that, but I'm not going to probably let everyone taste them. Um, but if you are a subscriber and you showed up, I'll let you guys try one. Um, anyway, or maybe a few, who knows. All right, so in front of me here, we have a number of new ones, actually. Uh, let's just start off the bat. We got Campanieri right here. It's this green gray fig. We have uh, Marangiana. It's a honey fig that's actually really interesting. It's large. It's got a purple exterior. Um, it goes from yellow to the uh, purple there. We have a smaller Smith, first Smith of the year. Not expecting a ton. This is uh, Fico, Lungo Fico de Porca, Portugalo from Mario's collection. We have Pastelier from Ciro. This has been incredible. We have Ninzi S. This is the first time I'm ever tasting it. Two figs of that. Noir de Boulogne, which um, has been incredible so far. The texture is amazing. We have, uh, let's see here. This is Martinenco Blanca from Ponza's collection. Martinenco Blanca. We have uh, uh, Verdino del Nord from Vladimir Rocco, this small yellow fig. This is, uh, oh man, I'm blanking on the name of this. Um, oh crap, I'm gonna have to go look at it. This is a Shia Black from UC Davis. Then we also have four hardy Chicago types that we're gonna compare. We have uh, Bari, um, Lion, on the left is, um, uh, oh man, there's so many names. This is GM 153, and then this is an, this is San Donato Dania, which is a, or Din Dania, which is a town in uh, Italy, or I think it's a city, or at least I think it's a city, maybe a region. Uh, Lyon's also, I think, a town in France. Bari is a town in Italy. So it's interesting how we're going to compare Hardy Chicago's from different parts of Europe uh, that we have at least somewhat confirmed that that's where it's from in that town. Um, and then this other one here is uh, Harvey used to sell it. Ah, oh, man, it's, it'll come to me at some point here. Let's just go forward with this. Here's Campanieri. We'll get some of these here, show you guys what they look like. They are just stunning on the outside. Um, it hasn't been raining a ton. It's been very warm here. This is the perfect time to be ripening figs. And uh, the quality is, is really nice. So I'm gonna just get a close up shot of each one. And then I'll taste, give a quick notes about it. That's it. All right, here we go, Campanieri. It's been very fruity this year. Um, it has a really nice texture, dense, thick. And the tree has gotten better every year. Uh, I have a grafted tree in a container, 10 gallon, and the figs have changed on the outside and shape every single year. It seems like every single season it changes and is slightly different. This year, it's almost acidic. It has like a tinge of um, a lot more berry this year and more fruitiness than in the past. In the past, it's been more um, of a sugar fig with fruitiness, similar texture, but uh, this year it seems to have a bit more berry. Also find a bit of an earthiness flavor in here when you get them right. And uh, especially when I ripen these from the, my in-ground trees, they're even more earthy, and in my opinion, they're fantastic. Here's Aishia Black, UC Davis. This one I believe, oh no, this one's not pollinated, but the inside looks a bit potentially spoiled. Um, so I hope it's not. This is a really nice fig. It's definitely one of the better tasting figs for sure. This is, I think my second one off of the tree this year. Oh, there's actually a little bit of mold in there. So I'm gonna use my knife and get a little bit of that out. It's very good. 
but by no means would I call it a intense berry fig. I, I, I just am not picking that up. For me, it's a sugar fig, but it's a very high quality sugar fig. And it dries well, but the problem with it, some of them are just not ripening properly. This one, the birds got to. And uh, in general, it just doesn't do too great in the moisture here. Here's another one that's, you can tell it's just not as ripe. Um, I think just in general, this fig needs to become healthier, more established, although my tree is arguably very healthy. I don't know. All right, let's try Martinica Blanca. This one I've been waiting for for a long time. Wow, that why is that yellow on the inside? First fig of the tree of the year. First fig off this tree. Shouldn't be yellow. It should be dark red. Um, interesting. All right, we'll have to evaluate this a little further. See what the deal is. Wow, that's really nice. The skin has its own interesting, very good flavor. It's a sugar fig that has really nice sweetness to it. And I really enjoy the skin. Closest thing I think I can taste to it is LSU Tiger actually. That's very impressive. I don't know why there's no berry. I don't know why there's no, um, I don't know why there's, yeah, there, there's, um, the pulp is yellow. That doesn't make any sense. I'll have to check Pons' website and his book to make sure it's labeled properly. But again, sometimes the first figs of the year that happens. This is Noir de Malone. And, uh, this fig is just super good. I, I pe people are, I don't know if they just, we haven't really had access to it, to be honest with you. Um, but if you're in Europe, you have plenty of access to this fig through Bode in France, and it's just superb. The pulp is exquisite. It used to be called the queen of figs. Oh my goodness, that's good. Super thick pulp. Decent berry flavor. I wouldn't say it's super strong, but it's it's about the texture with this one. It's like a cold at um, Easily sets figs, easily puts out figs, very productive, larger figs. Um, seems to be fantastic in so many different ways. It dries on the tree easily, although we've had a lot of great weather for that. Oh man. So far, a best tasting fig. Um, all right, let's try this Ninzi S. This is a fig that I have been waiting for for a long time. I got one here that's uh, a little underripe, but they all look beautiful. This is, um, I believe, from a town in Croatia. Uh, I think it's Croatia, where the town I believe is called Nin. No, I don't remember. This is the this, this sister fig um, to Nin V, for those of you guys who are aware of Nin V uh, that I reviewed uh, a few years ago, which I finally, thanks to um, a friend of mine, uh, Grant, who got, who got me the Nin v, Nin v tree after I actually killed mine, he sent me one back, or he gave me one back actually at last year's Staten Island Festival, planted it in the ground this spring, and it's doing fantastic. Uh, finally gonna get that tree back and established so I can spread that around. This tree is also very productive and I have one in the ground as well. And I have one in a container. I have actually a lot of extras that we will begin selling now that I've fruited this. Oh, that's just very good. Very, very good. I would argue, by the way, all these figs that we're ripening today are early or mid-season. None of them are late. I don't have any late figs yet ripening. 
although we do have some Adriatics turning and De La Roca turning. And those are on the later side, but uh, everything so far is, I would argue, either early or mid-season. This is very good, and I'm not just saying that because I'm going to be selling it soon. This has got a nice texture and a nice flavor, too. Real nice fig. It's got a thicker pulp, not as dense though as the Noir de Boulogne. I mean, that's just on a whole nother level. Um, but this is still really quality, the high quality fig for sure. It's uh, in between a, a berry fig and a sugar fig. It's very good, high quality for sure. Wow, really impressed with that. And I'm curious to see how it performs as we go forward with more moisture. Here is Verdino del Nord from Vladimir Rocco. This one here, uh, yeah, this one didn't ripen properly. This is still a young tree for me. Um, the fruits take a number of years to mature. It's like three or four years, unfortunately. You might get some good ones in the second year. That's definitely the case, but usually in that third year, you're looking at the fruits finally maturing. I got a couple trees in containers now, but we finally got some air layers and things that I've propagated in the ground uh, that are getting more and more established, root of cuttings in the ground as well. And uh, yeah, this is just a really great fig. Oh yeah, this one's really good. So far the best one of the year. And I've had uh, probably 10 so far. This is uh, really nice. Nice berry flavor, great sugar content, and the skin's really nice on it too. Um, the, whole, the whole texture of the fig is fantastic. This is better tasting than any of them so far. And just a notch lower, I would say, than the, the Bologna. So actually, it's right up there with... Um, you know, some of the best tasting and best eating experience figs you can have. Another fig this year, which we don't have in front of me here, but I've been eating a lot of them, is Mario's Squeglia. Um, we'll skip ahead right now to this one here, which is um, Mario's Lungo Fico de Portugalo. And, uh, but his Squeglia is really good. It's Mario's nine, number nine. It reminds me a lot of a Paradiso fig. Really nice texture. Not the most knock your socks off flavor to it, but it's still, it's just the eating experience is incredible. Like, like I mentioned earlier with Campaneri and some of the other ones that we, we got to taste. This, this fig here that we're, we're tasting is very similar to Long de Oot and all the many synonyms of this. Lungo de Portugalo is actually what they call it in Italy. And um, what I'll tell you though, is that when I went to his place and, and he showed me around all of his figs and I got to taste all these different varieties and he gave me all this wine and he was just super, super hospitable and very nice. This was actually my favorite of the day. And that we found, I found this actually on his tree it was kind of hidden lower down on the, on the tree, hidden by some leaves, and it was pretty well dried on the tree. Um, not fully dried, but definitely shriveled and how, exactly how I liked them. It was smaller, different shape than this. These are really fat and um, more like a long to oot. This was like slightly different. I'm hoping, what, I, what it really I'm, I'm getting at is I hope this is gonna eventually replace my long to oot and that this is like a better source of it. I can't confirm that yet. That's my goal with this one. We're still really far away from ever actually replacing Long de Oot. It's such an incredible fig, but if I can find a better source like this, that'd be great. Again, still a few years away. They've been getting a lot better over the last couple weeks. Very, very sweet. 
like you would normally find. It has a real nice sweetness to it. You know, definitely the sweetest fig actually on this plate so far, and probably the sweetest all day I will taste. Here's a Smith. This is a weird one. Even looks a little bit spoiled in there. First figs of the year, again, I, I told you this before with the Nin, or not the Nin, the, um, one of the others we looked at that just didn't look right. Oh yeah, the Martinenca Blanca. So, see how this turns out. It's actually spoiled. Hmm. Uh, a little bit there on the inside is spoiled. It looks, it looks spoiled, but sometimes when they look like that, it's not always the case. Wow, this looks interesting. Here's Pastelier. Holy moly, these are syrup filled. I hope they're still good. Wow, they look crazy. So different than the other ones I've been harvesting. Wow. I've been really enjoying this fig. I had not really gotten much of an opportunity to eat a lot of these in the past. It's very good. Very, very good. It reminds me a lot of the others, but actually more closely reminds me, I think, of Campaneri. Mm. Just so much syrup in there. Wow. That was a real juicy one. I think it's starting to turn though. And spoil. All right, finally we have Mar Marangiana. This is also a really juicy fig. And I've said this in the review that I did. This is just a more interesting honey fig. If you like honey figs, you gotta try this. It's right up there with Zafiro. Barbalone. Um, can't remember some of the other ones that I really like. This is a notch better than like LSU Champagne and notch better than Dotato. So definitely would try this. It's got interesting tropical flavor. Let's see if I pick it up this time. It must have rained when I wasn't here. Because some of the figs do taste a bit watered down and damaged, like the Pastelier. And this one. Hmm. Not picking it up as much. These just may not be as ripe, actually. But super, super juicy. I mean, you can, you can see how much they're glistening and there's so much... Um, honey in there. These to me though in the past when you get them perfect and obviously I think you really need the weather for it. Um, it's not really a humid climate fig and so for that reason I don't know if I could really recommend it in a, in a humid place. It's, it's got a longer hang time quite a significantly long hang time actually. Um, but if you get them perfect in, in great weather, they're, they're very good. Again, some of the better honey figs you can grow. So if I was in a dry place, you know, I would stick with figs like Golden Rainbow or Yellow Longneck and this one. Maybe I'd try Dotato, Zafiro. I would definitely grow Barb alone. Um, but this is more suited to those that, that drier weather. Whereas Zafiro, Barb alone, and LSU Champagne and uh, some of the other honey figs I like are more suited to this, this climate here. Um, all right. So here we go. Let's try, this is the, we have Harvey's fig left, which is similar to a Black Mission. I'll find the name of that in a second. But let's do the Hardy Chicago comparison really quickly. And 
I've probably eaten four or five, maybe, yeah, probably eaten five or actually five or six Hardy Chicago's so far this year. There's not a ton of difference, but believe it or not, I have one that's um, an unknown <laughs> that's uh, improperly labeled. Uh, someone sent me cuttings, turned out to be a Hardy Chicago. And whatever it is that they were growing is like one of the better hardy Chicago's I've ever eaten, actually. And uh, I don't have that one in front of us today. This is uh, San Donato. But the other one that's really been impressing me is this one, San Donato. Let's see if that continues. Yeah. That's just a much better berry flavor that I've had in any of these almost any of the hardy chicago's now both of them actually have had uh pollen i injected them with pollen but i tested the seeds in the first one and a lot of the seeds i've tested have not have not sank uh, i've so far i've been basically striking out with that so maybe they were pollinated and we'll continue to evaluate the hardy chicago's i don't just taste one and say oh this one's better but so far, uh, the San Donato is a very, very good hardy Chicago. And so is this unknown that I have. Here is, uh, let's see here. Here's, this is Bari. Yep. It's not ripe nearly as much as the others because the ants were really getting to it. I had to pick it. So this one we're not even gonna count. It's just not a fair comparison. This one here is uh, GM-153. My friend Bill claims that this isn't a Hardy Chicago, but I, so far, have seen no differences than your average Hardy Chicago. Sorry, Bill. I'm hoping you'd be right. It is pretty good. Definitely better than an average Hardy Chicago, that's for sure. Very good. And then finally we have Lion. This is Unknown Lion from France. I was hoping this wouldn't be a Hardy Chicago. And I picked it up because it looks like a cross between a Celeste and a Hardy Chicago. And I was like, oh, maybe it's a Celeste. Maybe it's a Hardy Chicago or maybe it's something different. And uh, this is the time that we'll find out. Nope. It's a hardy Chicago, more fruity, fruitier. Um, the San Donato had more of that berry flavor, actually, has more berry flavor than the lion, but lion is actually quite fruity. And I would argue is definitely one of the better hardy Chicago's, that's, that's quite good. Very good hardy Chicago. But I do find the San Donato so far is the best. Okay, so best of the year, I should say, so far. Have not been able to compare it to some of my other favorites, but we will. Oh yes, this is Pernet Noir, Pernet Noir. Beautiful fig, long neck. Some of them actually have a short stem, but the neck is super long and definitely similar to a Black Mission. You can tell by the inside, the outside, Every indication, in my mind, makes me think this is a black mission. But the black missions I've found and you commonly will find in the Northeast um, are just, they have a very different shape. They don't have this long neck, typically, unless they're Breva. They have a, a cigar shape. They're quite fat and they don't really have a neck. So this one, this neck, which you'll see on the tree, is just helping the figs hang downwards, which helps their eye stay safe from the rain. So big points for that. Let's try it. It seems like the hang time is rather short, very short. Hmm, bitter skin. So like you would see on a LSU purple sometimes or an Aruchiola de Elba sometimes, the skin can be bitter, but typically I find that bitter skin is not always there, and it also is only really there when it's cold, when the 
trees really slow down in metabolism. And so uh, I don't know why this one's having that issue. It seems like to me, because it's been 90, um, I don't know why that this is happening. It's, it's very strange. But regardless, um, I think it's tasty fig and I actually like the bitterness component. It's a nice contrast to the sweetness. It's something different. Not every fig has it. Um, but yeah, there it is. I, I think so far, just to wrap up my thoughts on this, this tasting, I think um, the Noir de Boulogne and the Verdino del Nord were the best tasting figs of the day. Thanks for watching this video here, guys. You got to the end, I really do appreciate it. Again, check out the blog for all the fig reviews that we're gonna do. I hope to see you guys at that uh, presentation I'm gonna give on the 5th. Hit that subscribe button for me, hit that like button. See you guys for the next video. Take care.